Today, I'm going to expose this die-hard bear fanatic by the name of Michel Pastoro. He's a French professor in medieval history, but at the same time a fraud. This video is going to show you how far bear fanatics go to lie and rewrite history because of personal preferences. Warning. Some bear enthusiasts use this heraldry book from this French medieval historian Michel Pastoro. His point of view about the origin of King of the Beasts is very selective and ignores other facts. His approach on the subject can be seen as highly partial with poor professionalism. Paganism worship thousands of animals, but not all at the same level. People relate to what they see. Local people would be impressed by their native animals, such bears and wolves, for example, especially in the absence or extinction in some European regions of the lion. What is remarkable is the place the lion have occupied in their culture in regions with no native lions. The lion's reputation was so great that in numerous cases surpassed their native animals. If we look the antique and more recent world history as a whole, the most iconic predator was the lion. The brown bear was common in all Europe. Historically, the lion was the dominant animal icon with the bull and the eagle. Even after the lion long time extinction, the Romans did not choose their native brown bear to represent the power of Rome. They choose the lion. Rome was full of lion statues. The Romans considered the lion the king of the beasts. And Romans emperor who sat not on a bear throne but on a lion throne, were ready to pay any amount of money to get lions for their games. Games without lions were unthinkable. No price limits to get lions. It is said, two things was absolutely necessary. Gladiators and lions. The lion was a symbol of victory. After an important victory, Romans put a lion statue on the battlefield. I also read, that it was common to see close to the entrance of Romans arena's lion statues. The bear was not the original king of the beasts, neither the champion of the Romans games. It is important to know that the lions that were used in games were all expected to die. Every victorious lion would confront another adversary until he dies. Romans would not pay four years to feed lions until the next games. The biggest and most important temple in Rome was the Capitol. The Capitol is the temple of the Romans' most powerful god. The kings of all gods was worshipped, Jupiter. Jupiter is linked to the sun worshipped. So is the lion. The lion is linked to Jupiter and in Jupiter's temple. There were live lions. Outside the Capitol, the Romans practiced lion sacrifices. Why the lion is linked to the cult of the sun. In antiquity, the most powerful thing known to man was the heat of the sun. Antique people considered the lion the strongest animal. The Mesopotamian kings called themselves lions, and only a king had the right to kill the king of the beasts. The animals in the antique Mesopotamia, the Asiatic lion, the brown bear, the Caspian tiger, the leopard, the hyena, wolves, the oryx buffalo, hippos, rhinos, and Asiatic elephants. The Mesopotamians and Egyptians worshipped thousands of animals. But the most important was the lion. The lion was also the symbol of warfare. All warriors wanted to be a lion. Many powerful gods and goddesses and war gods were linked to the lion, the Romans' army favorite. God was a lion god. The remorse they have is so much that they desperately want to place the tiger or the bear above the lion. The history of ancient civilizations put the lion above all other beasts in the same ancient China. In the antique world, the lion is linked to the sun, the most powerful thing known to men. In order to elevate the tiger and bear, they have to lie and twist history in antiquity. The known world was cover of lion sculptures, statues of all sorts. This is what the bear propagandists have to say. They claimed that the lion was only called King of the Beasts because the title was only given by the church on a silver platter. <laughs> the lion was called King of the Beasts way before the church even existed. 
In fact, the lion was king of the beasts since the first cradle of civilization. Now you see how desperate these nut jobs truly are. Pathetic. Bear fans will argue that he is reliable just because he is a historian. But what they don't understand is that he is only an expert in medieval history. The medieval history is only after the fall of the Roman Empire. This fraud also claims the bear was the dominant animal. He is the only historian that claims the bear was the dominant animal, of course. What's even more ironic is that he is only an expert historian in medieval and not the Roman Empire. It's literally hilarious when they have no direct references to prove their claim. Yet we have Roman mosaics or ancient mosaics that shows bears got their asses whooped by bulls. Fun fact, the word king itself is synonyms with lion. It is obvious that Michel Pastoreau purposely misinformed to support his ideology. This of course contradicts the very definition of heraldry, history itself and many historians. Michel Pastoreau is known as an educated fool. Final nail in the coffin from Michel Pastoreau, also ex-lawyer and entrepreneur Charles Haywood. Maximum leader of the worthy house says Pastoreau has a tendency to make claims that exceed the evidence. This statement means that the person being referred to has a tendency to make claims or statements that go beyond the available evidence or factual support. It suggests that they might assert or argue for something without sufficient proof or justification. Bear fanatics and tiger fanatics have not changed. Any competent historians would have known this. The lion is the most invoked animal in all human culture. The tiger and bear inaccurated historical info are often frequent on the internet and also in the media.